Grandpa's Teeth by Rod Clement Narrated by me Help! I've been robbed! We heard Grandpa shouting. It's a disaster! Come quickly! He was still shouting as Mom, Agatha, and I ran up the stairs. Grandpa's room was a mess, but to be honest, it was always a mess. He blamed Gump, his old dog, but Gump looked too old to me to make much of a mess. What was taken? gasped Mom. Your VCR? Your television? Not your gold-plated golfing trophy. No, said Grandpa. It's much more serious. It's my teeth. They've been stolen. Grandpa normally kept his teeth in a glass of water by the bed. The glass was still there, but the teeth were missing. You haven't swallowed them by mistake, have you? asked Mom. Of course not, replied Grandpa. Those teeth were special, handmade by the finest Swiss craftsmen. Agatha looked at Mom and whispered, Why is Grandpa talking funny? You see how serious it is? moaned Grandpa. I may never speak the same again. Are you sure you've looked everywhere? asked Mom. Under the bed, behind the cabinet, in all the drawers? Yes, replied Grandpa with tears in his eyes. I've looked everywhere. Mom called the police. Officer Rate looked grave. We've done a thorough search of the room and house, but we've found nothing at all. No teeth, no clues. Everyone was at home at the time of the theft, so how the thief got in and out without being seen is a mystery. Can you give us a description of the stolen articles, Mr. Pertwistle? Grandpa frowned, rubbed his chin, and then looked closely at the officer. Could you smile, please? He asked. Smile? Yes, a nice big smile. Officer Rate grinned sheepishly. No, shouted Grandpa angrily. I mean really smile. Officer Rate smiled broadly. Hmm. Grandpa leaned forward, tapped the officer's teeth with his finger, and growled suspiciously. They look just like those. Officer Rate looked shocked. Er, I've had these for years. Officer Rate took us all down to the station for further investigation. Using Grandpa's description, the police artist drew a picture of the missing teeth. They put up our wanted poster with all the others. We made copies and put them up all over town. Officer Rate rounded up the usual suspects and took them in for questioning. All of them were asked to smile. Most of them had missing teeth as well, but just one or two, not the whole set. They even brought in our unfriendly neighbor, Mrs. Carbuncle, because her own teeth didn't fit, but Grandpa didn't recognize her or the teeth in the police lineup. I have never seen her smile before, he explained to Officer Rate. After several days, Officer Rate had to admit that no teeth had been found, no thief had been caught, and no new clues had been uncovered. Grandpa suspected everyone, especially anyone who didn't smile. Soon the whole town was smiling at him. Although he never smiled back, he had nothing to smile with. Mom even got a call from one of those TV shows, Unsolved Crimes. They came to the house in a helicopter. We had to reenact the whole thing. When Grandpa was interviewed, he asked the reporter, Pearl White, if he could borrow some of her teeth. After all, he mumbled, you have more than enough. Dad called Switzerland to find out how much a new set of teeth would cost. He was so shocked when he found out he dropped the phone. The only way we could ever afford it, he joked to Mom, is to sell the house. Grandpa thought this was a great idea. Who needs a house anyway, he moaned. It doesn't help you chew your food. To cheer him up, we all took Grandpa to the amusement park. It was a disaster. He took one look at the front entrance and burst into tears. 
Everyone watched unsolved crimes, but no one called Officer Rate, and the crime remained unsolved. Some spare teeth were left in the mailbox, but none of them fit properly. People began locking their doors at night, imagining a teeth thief was loose on the streets. No one knew who would be next, so fear gripped the town. The thief had to be caught, and soon. It seemed that the only way to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the teeth in your mouth were your own was to smile broadly at every person you met. Anyone who didn't smile immediately was dragged off to the police station for more questions and a chat with Officer Rate. So everyone began smiling at everyone else, all the time, everywhere, even at funerals. Because of Grandpa's teeth, the whole town was beginning to suffer. Tourists, seeing the endless sea of smiling faces, were too scared to get out of their cars. After a while, they stopped coming altogether. Dad's cafe, like the rest of the town, was losing business. The mayor called an emergency meeting. That night, for the first time that anyone could remember, the town hall was full. Speaker after speaker stood up to complain about the loss of customers and the constant strain of smiling all day every day. Pastor Butter summed up the situation. While I have always considered this a happy town, there are limits. No one wants to smile without a reason, and there aren't many reasons to smile in this town at the moment. It's time, I believe, to put a stop to it. The crowd cheered. Mr. Pertwistle had one of the finest sets of teeth in the country, and he alone cannot afford to replace them. In fact, I alone could not afford to replace them either. But if every one of us put one dollar in the collection plate tonight, we would have enough money to buy two sets of teeth. Most people put in a dollar, others put in two. At the presentation ceremony, Grandpa opened the package and revealed two sets of brand new teeth. Why are they different sizes? asked the mayor. Oh, only one is for me, replied Grandpa, popping one of the sets into his mouth. The other one is for Mrs. Carbuncle. Her teeth never fit properly, and she has such a pretty smile. Grandpa was very happy with his new teeth. So was Mrs. Carbuncle. They smiled all the time. In fact, they were so happy that Grandpa's old dog, Gump, smiled too. For the first time ever. The End